using Azure, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, take it away, Victoria. Okay, yeah. So, as Mark's just said, my name's Victoria Sloan, and I am a front end engineer at Smashfly, best company in Belfast, so I'm not looking promoted or anything. And it wouldn't exactly be a talk if I didn't put my Twitter handle in there ah, for you all to tweet me afterwards. And I have a keen interest in design. I'm not a designer by any means, I'm a front end developer. But I have a real keen interest, and that's why I've decided to do this talk today. So, being interested in design, I'm constantly reading articles and blog posts on Medium or Twitter. And loads of these blog posts state that designers should code. As a designer, you should know how to develop an application. And yes, in these articles, there's valid points in there. Designers should absolutely be more familiar with the development process and should have an understanding of how things work. In turn, this will help them work with the developers that they work with on a daily basis. However, a question I don't see being asked as often is, should developers learn to design? And that's really what's inspired this talk. So I'm not saying as a developer, you should go off and design all your own applications yourself and ignore your designer. That's crazy. They've got years and years of experience. And developers aren't pushing the pixels every single day, but we're constantly making decisions that affect the outcome of a design every day. So developers can work with designers and they can raise important issues around things like localization, accessibility, error handling, and edge cases, and the list goes on. And most front-end developers have an interest in design or we wouldn't be doing it, but I feel a lot of us are intimidated by design and that's maybe because we just don't know where to start. So today, I hope to dispel some of the myths around design, share some insights, and hopefully get you thinking more like a designer that means that in turn you'll be less dependent on the designers that you work with. So, before I go any further, I think it's important to mention this right brain versus left brain theory. For anyone who's not familiar, um, this theory states that if you are, you know, right brained or left brained, you are either more analytical or you're more creative, on the other hand. But there's tons of resources that show that this is just not true. That's not how our brains work at all. It's important to note this because we are so quick as human beings to convince ourselves that we're just not capable of something because we're not set up that way. I hear people saying, oh, I'm a developer. That means I can't design or, oh, I'm a designer. I can't develop. And that puts us into these two camps and that's not how our brains work at all. There's no semblance that when you're good at one thing, it'll keep you from being good at another. And you'll hear developers bragging all the time about how bad they are at design because they think it makes them look like they're a better developer but really, they're just bad at design. And studies show that the more you use your brain in different types of ways, the better and stronger your brain will be. So it's important to consider these things for our personal limitations because we'll convince ourselves that we just can't do something because we're not set up that way. So. I'm going to first answer the basic question, what is design? And this may seem fairly obvious, but I think it's important to draw the distinction between UI design, UX design, and design. So UI design um, regards the visuals and how a, an app looks and feels. And UX design is around the interaction of an application, but what is this sweet spot in the middle? Is this design? And a lot of people treat UI design and UX design as two completely different disciplines. But to me, they're harmonious. You can't go and design the UI without considering the interaction and the usability of an application. So I think it's important to mention this quote from the big man, Steve Jobs. Design is not just what it looks and feels like. Design is how it works. And I'll get, more, I'll get into this more later about how it works versus how it looks and how we need to consider it. So we know what design is, but what isn't design? So design isn't a magical process. A des designer doesn't go off for five minutes and come back with a fully completed design. Designers have to consider so many different problems, matters, and considerations. Nor is a design a phase that ends before development. In fact, design and development run alongside each other in a number of different stages. So of course there's more than just development things as a dev, but what I want to focus on here is the design. So before, um, so initially uh, your typical designer will start off by sketching something on pen and paper before moving to mocking it up, creating a high fidelity mock-up on an app like Sketch. 
A common stage now for designers is to prototype. So they'll use an app like Origami or Framer to actually visualize the interactions between the screens of their application and just to show the animations and how the app actually fits together. They'll then review and critique their design and then they'll iterate on that. So they'll iterate on their design every time, getting feedback and updating their mock-up. So hopefully before it gets to an implementation and testing, it's all done. But of course, that's not how it always works. So I've discussed that design isn't a magical process and design doesn't end before development. But another thing to consider, there's a common misconception that as a designer, you need to be artistic. Some people feel because they can't draw on a straight line or they can't even draw a stick mat that they won't be good at design. And just like you won't be a good artist overnight, you'll not be a good designer overnight. It takes work and it takes practice. And also, design isn't just about taste. Yes, of course, for visual design, this plays a role. But for interaction design, it's much less subjective. There's rules to good design and there's even more rules to inter UI design. So, I may not have convinced you why you should design as a developer. Maybe you're a developer and you write code all day and you feel you're really good at it. Maybe you already work with a designer. And, or maybe if you're at a small company, you don't have a designer or you have limited access to a designer. Designers can be expensive to have around all the time and often in companies, um, you'll have a high designer, developer to designer ratio. Designers are often on tons of different projects, but when developing, I'm pretty sure most of us have came across the problem when we come across a design solution that maybe we haven't thought of, about initially. Maybe there's an edge case that's came in or something we don't understand. So what do you do when the designer's away? Do you wait? Do you queue up all your problems until they come back? Often deadlines are tight and we can't do that. We need to make the decision there and then. Which leads us to developers run into these design problems all the time. And as a developer, you'll need to fill in the blanks. So this might come down to guesswork, but do you really wanna leave the design down to guesswork? Usually when this happens, designers will come back from their nice holiday and they'll see the mess that you have made. They'll, this will create more work because the designer will have to undo the mess and it will also create more work for the developer as they have to implement those changes and test them. And as for designers, they don't have the time to understand all the nuances of an application or be aware of all the edge cases, meaning that sometimes the developer can be the best person to make these informed decisions. So what it comes down to is saving time. The more informed you are, the more time you'll save. When you're a dev and you're informed about design, you'll be less likely to hear the following things I'm sure we all hear. Move this two pixels over, make this transition smoother, what does that even mean? And change this text to a lighter gray. Like how many grays do we come across as front end developers every day? And you'll always get told that it needs to be a different shade of gray. But these are things as developers that we should be able to notice ourselves and we shouldn't be leaving this for the designer to come and pick up the pieces afterwards. So let's look at some of these rules. So as I've said, design is not a magical process. It's something that's driven by lots of constraints and considerations. Sorry if these slides are inconsistent, but <laughs> rule one, consistency. So when it comes down to design, there's no silver bullet. However, one small thing that goes a long way is consistency. So making sure to achieve consistency is almost like creating your own rules. And as a developer, this can be done by setting up your own style guides or layout grids. It can be as simple as taking a step back and saying, is this the same color as the previous screen? Do these elements have the same padding or do these text boxes align? It sounds simple, but so many of us don't do it. And in order to create consistency, you need to be able to train yourself to see consistency. A common trait in designers is that they're super meticulous and they obsess over the smallest details but no one is born like this. It's something that you pick up over time. Then all of a sudden you'll notice yourself looking at a certain website or web app and icons are misaligned and text boxes are misaligned. It's a horrible curse, but once you see it, you can't unsee it and it's an invaluable skill to have. Something that does not need the trained eye is <laughs> a website I had to use this morning. I'm sorry if anyone has ever worked on Translink, I'm really sorry, but even I know they've tried to like hook up with these glider colors and all, but this journey planner looks completely different and it's on the same website. It's not even on the same side of the screen. 
It, the controls are completely different. The buttons work differently. The date pickers are different. By making this consistent, we could improve this user interface so much more and it would make it easier for the users to use this. Like I had to really figure out how to use this and that's not a good design. Moving on, so space is your friend. So we may refer to this as negative space or white space. So if we take this example of the exact same application, one looks a bit messy and it's harder to distinguish because the elements are closer together. The only difference here is space. By increasing the white space around the elements, it makes it easier for us to focus on the content and it gives it room to breathe. You may end up with less content on screen, but we could argue that that's a better thing because the less you see, the more you have to focus on. So this isn't working, but this was a really fancy like app with loads of animations and stuff, but like, <laughs> Just imagine, <laughs> let's just imagine. So don't let the constraints design for you. And when I say that, I mean, when you're thinking about design as a developer, it's very easy to think, I'm gonna come up with the easiest thing for me to develop, which is understandable. However, on the flip side, designers can come up with these wacky things that are near impossible to implement, and they may not be aware of the technical constraints. For developers, the knowledge they have can really go a long way into helping us to create tangible designs that don't feel basic. They can consider performance and accessibility and propose similar ideas. So avoid system colors. Um, you can probably tell this was designed by a developer and they've actually updated this since, but I got a screenshot of it before they did that. <laughs> so it's called Ugly Tub. And um, we're gonna focus here on the colors. So this is just a blue that they've clearly just typed in blue. So they're using the system colors. If you're not gonna be working with a designer or you're working on your own personal projects, please try to tweak your colors just a little bit because this is just so harsh and awful looking. I don't even need to explain this screen. So if we think about this blue, it's just not natural. Some, it's the same blue that you see if you've had the misfortune of using a Windows machine. I'm a, Roger's nodding his head because he got the blue screen of death the other day during the demo. But this is the exact same blue and I see so often developers using this as their default blue. You could modify this slightly just by making it maybe a little bit more green, just a little bit less harsh. Or you could even use the eyedropper to uh, pick colours out of a, an image or a photograph. So, on to how it works versus how it looks. So, of course, an app, how an app looks is really important. You don't want to use something that's ugly. You want to use something that's nice. However, when, when we're considering this, we need to think about how it works as well. If an app has flashy animations and you know pretty buttons and spinners and whistles and bells, you may like the look of it. However, if it's hard to use, you won't be using it for very long. And it's important to weigh up these pros and cons when introducing a new design. Developers have a great insight into this and they can contribute to ideas. They can ask the questions like, is the prettier solution the better solution? Can this design be made accessible? Does this feature work similarly to another feature within the same product suite? And is it intuitive? So, controversial, but be boring. Honestly, the best solution is often the boring one. Obvious design will beat clever design every single time. It's one of those things where you might have to compromise on the visual side of things just to make it usable. Sometimes you can go down the rabbit hole of designing something and you think it looks really great, but then you've forgotten to add a really important a case and all of a sudden you add all these buttons in and it looks horrendous. This is one of the biggest challenges you can come across as a designer to try and make it consistent, usable, but also look nice as well. And ignore trends. If you look at the front page of Dribble, if you look at the front page of Tribble, you'll see a lot of bold animations and trends. As a developer, you'll have insight into the pros and cons of adding certain design to an app in terms of your accessibility and performance. And yes, some of these trends may look really great for now. And these trends are good for inspiration, but strong foundations will go a lot longer. They'll be a lot more permanent and your app won't look outdated in three months time. So question everything. It's important to be self-critical. It's easy for us to criticize other people and it's harder for us to criticize ourselves. But we should really, when we're designing, 
question every element that's on the screen. Does it benefit the screen and is it consistent? For usability, think if I gave this to my parents, could they use this? If you have to give them an instruction manual, then it's not, it's not a good design and it's not safe. Remember to think of the average duo when you're designing. A developer's probably not going to be picking it up and designing it. So think about someone who you think is a complete technophobe when you're designing your applications. So the secret to good design. So there, as I've said, there's no magic trick or silver bullet. Just like development, the key is iteration. Keep improving it and improving it and improving it until it's as good as possible. Share your ideas and get feedback. This will improve your design. Iteration is the key to success. And good design happens when there's an overlap between designers and developers. So if developers are included in the design discussions earlier, they'll have more of a scope as to what's going on. And when design and de developers work together, they'll gain empathy for each other's vocations. They'll appreciate the problems that each other have to come across every day. So everyone can be a designer. <laughs> and I'd like to think that design is getting a lot less intimidating. You don't even need the latest version of Photoshop and there's loads of applications you can get started with. But when you first start, this is probably how it's going to look. You may look at your favorite applications, for example, Spotify, and wish that your de designs look the same. But that's not always how it works out. There's lots of ways a design can fail. And it can take a lot of failures to get a success. Just think about the code you wrote a year ago, or yesterday, and <laughs> just see how far you've come. It's the same with design. It'll take a lot of work and a lot of practice, and you'll need a lot of feedback to get to where you want to be. So designer versus developer. <laughs> Um, we often joke that we're from a different planet, but designers and developers are in the same industry for the same goal, to ship great products to customers all over the world. Designers need to lead and explain their reasoning behind design decisions so developers can learn. And developers need to ask the questions and raise the potential concerns and get involved themselves. If developers knew more about design, they would be able to fill in the blanks and over time their design will get better. So I'll not keep you too long today because I know it's late. So I'm just going to recap a few of the points I've made today. So should developers design? So we already do. Every day we're making decisions that affect the outcome of a design. Consistency is incredibly important. Just take the TransLink example, for example. We could definitely tweak that just with a bit of consistency. <laughs> Try not to, to design the easiest thing to code. And design obvious over clever. Designers should involve developers. And finally, a clean UI is like clean code. It's organized, consistent, and it's as sparse as it can be while doing everything it needs. Thank you.